Hello fellow Unreal Engine developers and welcome to the first part of creating this tropical island. In today's session we'll do the basic project setup, create the lighting and sculpt the main island features with the ocean surrounding it. So let's get straight into it. The first thing we're going to do is set up a new project in Unreal Engine 5. So open up the UE5 editor and we'll create a new project in the games category and choose third person so that we've got a mannequin to uh, run around for reference height. Uh, leave all the other settings as they are, desktop maximum, no starter content, no ray tracing and call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine Island Sculpt and create. Once the editor's opened up, update the project file here if it comes up with that message. And the first thing we want to do is go into the plugins. If you don't see manage plugins here, then go into edit plugins, search for water and enable that. It'll say, do you want to make, do you want, are you sure you want to do it? It's experimental, say yes, and then restart the project. Once it's restarted, let's create a new level. So file new level and go with a completely empty level. And the first thing we want to do is set up all of our lighting. So go into window environment light mixer and click on create skylight, create atmospheric light zero, create sky atmosphere, create volumetric cloud and create height fog. So your scene should now look like this, a sort of a foggy sky with some clouds in the sky. And just to complete the setup for this, go to the um, well exponential height fog we've got selected at the moment. So select that and for now we'll set it to density of 0.1 and go further down and make it volumetric fog. We can change all these um, settings later on. Actually that's a bit too much. Um, Let's do 0 0.01, that looks better. And go to your skylight and click on real-time capture. You'll just get uh, better shadows with the real-time capture on. So that is our lighting setup. Uh, let's finally save our new level. So click on save and let's create a new folder at the top level called maps. Go into that and let's call this island. Okay, and so that we don't have to open this level every time we come into this session, go to edit project settings, maps and modes, and just choose the editor startup map as island. And that's our basic setup down, done. We're ready now to create our base water landscape. So to create our island base with the ocean surrounding it, we first need a landscape. So go into the select mode and choose your landscape mode. And you can choose whatever um, size you want, but if you want to follow on exactly with me, I'm going to do a smallish island. So I'm going to choose 63 by 63 quads and two by two section. And that gives me uh, 1K by 1K. Although the island will not fill the whole of that, it'll still be around five minutes, 10 minutes to get around the whole island. So with that done, click create. Oh, sorry, one, one more very important thing. Make sure you have enable edit layers um, because we're gonna do, we're gonna do layers on top of the uh, base island. So click on create. And now we have this, if I, Zoom up so you can use E to and Q to go up and down, W, A, S, and D to move around. And you can see that we've now got this large checkerboard terrain. So now we want to create our base island with the ocean around it. So come out of landscape mode, go back to select. And in the quickly add to the project menu here, 
go to all classes and scroll down to W for water do you find the water body ocean and drag that in and you'll see again if we move up and around a bit you can see that we have a sort of plinth for the island here we're surrounded by water and there's a couple of things I just want to um, fix here uh, firstly it creates it with this sort of ridge can you see just inside those um, just inside those spline points there's a, a ridge a circular ridge I'm not quite sure why they create it with that ridge but we want to get rid of that so if you go over to with the water body ocean selected if you go to the location and change the uh, Z parameter from 100 to 70 that will get rid of that ridge here and the second thing is let's put it in the center of our landscape so change the location to the x and y to zero and zero and that is now in the dead center of our landscape now you can change the um, size of this island if you want um, if i show you let's go in and just start playing so you can sort of see from the personal perspective if i go into play mode you can see that it's not a tiny desert island but it's not a huge island either I can run across it in a minute or two maybe not even the two minutes maybe just a minute but for what we're doing that's probably um, sufficient and later on we'll play with some of the um, water parameters as well uh, we might not want the waves to be as high but uh, that's the right size for me but if you wanted a larger island you could just scale it up so with the water body ocean selected you could lock the scale here to make it uniform and you could make it two to make it twice as large um, but for now let's just leave it at one and uh, that'll me mean it'll be easier to sculpt our mountains on there so let's do a quick save where we are and now we're ready to add on our um, volcanic mountains there are a few different ways we can add our or sculpt our mountains onto the island we can do it manually although that tends to result in sort of quite smooth um, bulbous mountains we want more craggy mountains um, there's also a landmass plugin you can use to generate mountains although I found they tend to be a little smooth for my liking as well and uh, the third option which is the one I've gone with for today's tutorial is to use alpha brushes which is um, real height maps of terrain features such as mountains that you can stamp onto your landscape um, change the size add multiple elements if you want um, so we need an alpha brush for a volcanic mountain in here and luckily I found a resource that provides free alpha brushes so if you go to this uh, uh, website unrealecosystem.com I'll, I'll put the link in the description below uh, this chap Jacob Halusjak I probably mispronounced his name does some fantastic tutorials on YouTube um, to do with Unreal Engine landscapes uh, games and cinematics and he has kindly provided these free assets of volcanic mountains so if you download those you'll find four different uh, mountain alpha brushes that we can use and if you go back to the project here we'll create a folder here new folder called alpha brushes open that up and once you've downloaded and unzipped those then we're going to take this volcanic four which seems the got it's got the sort of more spindly edges and you've got 8 bit and 16 bit here and um, I believe the Unreal Engine only uses the 8 bit versions for the alpha brushes so drag this and drag it into your um, new folder so now 
if we go back to Unreal Engine, we now have this volcanic brush. Just make sure that's saved. If you do Control Shift and S, it'll save anything that's still open. And now we can use that volcanic brush to sculpt our mountains. So let's go back into landscape mode. And what we need to do now is we need to add a, another layer. So we've got this water layer here. What we'll do is we will create another layer on top, which I'm going to rename. So F2 and call this mountains. And let's do a save. And then up here, if you just use a regular simple circular brush, you'll be painting these sort of lumpy um, sort of uh, hills onto the island. But if we choose the alpha brush, then we can now choose a um, brush to use. So click on this um, texture, start to tap, type volcano, and we can pick our alpha brush here. Whack the brush size right up to the maximum. You can leave the tool strength at 0.3 and auto rotate on. That just means it'll go the direction you're sort of pushing your mouse as you move around. And you can see that um, it's sort of about half the size of the island. Now, the way this works is that if you um, just uh, click once on there, you'll get a very light height map change. If you click and hold down, it'll continue to raise the height up. So let's start off in the middle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a left mouse button and I'm going to hold it down to get a central mountain. Like so. And then I'm going to go around the edge and do ones that are about half the size. And then what we can do is we can, so you can move around with WASD, Q and E. And just have fun. If you if you mess up and you want to start again, you can just erase the layer and start again. Um, all of these tend to have um, a flat top at the moment. So what we can do now is we can reduce our brush size. So you can either reduce it here or while you're in the editor, if you use the square brackets, you can use the left square bracket to reduce the size and the right square bracket to increase the size. So we can get some smaller uh, brushes and just click on with those to get rid of these flat edges. And if you want to um, carve into the mountain, so say this one here, we want to create a little crater. If you hold shift down while you're using the uh, sculpting brush, it acts like a sculpting in reverse it sort of carves away so create a little crater there and all we can do is we can just go around and maybe make the brush a sort of medium size and we'll just patch in some interesting little areas in between we could even go out into the sea slightly as well uh, let's on this side of the island let's go just out create some sort of rocky outcrops. And again, you spend as much time as you want working on these. We may need to come and smooth some stuff later on. So if you go close up, you might notice there's a few little, what I call jaggies. Can you see here on this bit? They're sort of like little triangular spikes. So if you want to get rid of those sort of jagged areas, Choose your smooth brush. Uh, again, reduce the size. And then lightly brush over them. So we don't want to get rid of all of the terrain we've created. And you might have to go around smoothing some things up. And you can always do it later on. It's only when you're actually uh, running around as a character you'll know if it seems uh, right or not. So you see there's some level, levels here. 
That's simply because I made this very high, this one. So it's uh, you've only got so many vertices to play with in this small island, so you can't make it too steep. Okay, so that looks pretty good. What I'll do now is I'm going to, I want to just have one main beach in the island and the rest of it I want it to be fairly rocky. So in order to do that what we can do is go back to our um, water layer. In fact we don't need to be in here at all. Come out of landscape mode. Let's do a quick save. Don't worry if you see these sort of triangles sometimes. It just seems to happen when you save or load the, reload the level sometimes. Just look away and look back and it sorts it out. Uh, so um, now what I want to do is reduce the base island so that we just have that one main beach. So let's go back to our water body ocean. And what we can do is you've got these four spline points here. So let's say I want, let's say here to be our main beach where I'm looking at just now. So what I'll do is I'll take these other ones and just move them in. So you can see where I'm moving them in, it's creating a rocky. It's even creating a few little islands on the outside, which is perfectly fine. And then on this side here, I'll grab this spline point and just move it in a bit. So we've got a bit of a beach there, but not much. And then if I just have a look around. Yeah, that side of the island is fairly rocky. We've got a little volcano here. And then over on here, this side of the island, we've got our main beach. And again, maybe just do a little bit of smoothing here on these bits. So go back to the landscape mode, make sure I've got my mountains layer selected and just smooth a couple of these bits here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And there maybe. So let's just uh, come back out of landscape mode, do a save. Look away and back again to get rid of those weird shadows. And let's just see what it looks like from the player perspective. So this is our main beach. We've got a couple of very tall mountains there. But that's a good start. There's, the nice thing about this um, workflow is that because we've got the layers here, it's non-destructive. We can come back in, we could reduce the size of mountains, we could re-carve the mountains. But in terms of uh, sculpting, we are pretty much done here. So we have the basis of our island ready for texturing. So in the next episode, I'll show you how to use a combination of automatic texturing and manual texturing to start making this island look a little bit more realistic. So I will see you then.